and try harder. It's being, it gets a bit down at times because you don't really get to enjoy yourself too much. It's embarrassing, isn't it, really? You, get, you don't really want to do anything with spelling, or at least not show it to anybody else. That's, the way, that's why I don't like showing people my work sort of thing. I so, I mean, are you embarrassed about it? Uh, I'm not embarrassed. I'm just, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what I am, actually. Just uh, confused sort of thing. Jamie believes his dyslexia led to his behavioural problems. My form tutor made me look stupid in front of the class because he never gave me a sheet. Give one everyone a sheet and he says, this brain, you can't do this, it's too hard, or something like that. And after the lesson, he's phoned up my dad and I've got really annoyed, slammed down the phone, told him, if you ever do that again, I'm going to throw you through a window. Like, I was standing right next to a window and he's standing next to me and I says, look, you're at that ground faster than anything. Well, I think, at times, why, if I didn't have dyslexia, what could I achieve without it? Because I've achieved, a, oh, I hope I've achieved a fair bit with it. But uh, then you seem to think, well, I have got dyslexia, there's nothing I can do about it, so I've just got to keep trying and try the best I can with it. Do you enjoy school? I don't dislike it. Your behaviour has been better. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Because I feel to a extent I don't have to prove anything anymore. Really, I don't know what it is, maybe I'm growing up, but there's nothing to prove to anyone, so I don't feel like doing it. I think I've come to terms with it more and I find it easier to work with my dyslexia. Is it something that you've accepted you've got to live with for the rest of your life? Yeah, I've accepted that. A bit uh, re reluctantly, but I've accepted it. It's going to be hard, but some people are worse off, so I suppose I've got to grant myself lucky. Both boys are in their last year at Park and are now thinking about the future. When I was in my work experience, all I was doing was washing up, and I'm thinking, great life, like, behind the kitchen sink all the time. And I was thinking, in school, like, I'm sitting down, when it comes down to the crunch, really, I'm not ever doing too much, but I'm always doing enough. And really, when I think about it, school's a lot easier than anything else. School's, I suppose school's a dos, really, half the time. Just imagine, five years' time, what do you think you'll be doing? Where do you think you'll be? Well, I don't know where I'll be. Hopefully, I'll be... Uh... Training to be a teacher in some college or wherever, wherever, if I'm lucky. Are you worried about being unemployed at any point? No, because I suppose if I am unemployed, there's always ways of making money, and then everyone knows that. What ways? They can't be said, can they? The Stein family have come to see what? the head about Deborah's detention. The head does not believe Deborah's story. Where were you told this message? Down by the um, medical office, by the steps. What were you doing down there? On my way up to my lesson. Why were you down the other end of the school? Because I went that way. There I is no go, way from the drama room. I always go that way. No, the, the drama room is there. The science room is above the drama room. The other end of the school, right the way down there. There's no way you can get to science without going on a total circuit of the school and coming back on yourself. There are... I can't remember why I went that way, but I no. usually always go that way. Well, I can't understand that, Deborah. That just doesn't... I don't think that's really very that's relevant. Right. I think it's totally relevant. Um, if, <sighs> if, if you listen through to what I'm going to say, I think it's totally relevant. So this boy came up to you, he knew your name. So someone you had never met before, you knew his name. Yeah. Sorry, he knew your name. Yeah. I don't understand how that could be possible. You were right by the medical room, where there's a telephone, medical assistance, and the signing out book. Did it not occur to you to take advantage of any of those no. systems because the telephone would have been quicker anyway? No. Have you been given a chance to find this boy? Have we offered every chance yes. for you to find him? Have you found him? No. So he can't be found? No. Well, I'm very sorry. I cannot possibly accept the story because I think that basically there was a science test on during that lesson. Rubbish. She's done the science test and she's passed it with flying colours. Did she take it at the time? She took it that afternoon. But she didn't take it at the time. It's not rubbish. I object to that, quite frankly. It's not rubbish. I don't care what you object to, to be quite honest. I honestly don't think that this is going to get us very far. Well, I don't think it will get us very far, no. because obviously you've already made up your mind not to... You've just prepared. called my daughter a liar in front of us, basically. Yes. yes. And I and believe... she's not a liar. OK. But I, I, I don't accept her story. There's too much wrong with it. And if I'm taking this in the cold light of the facts, I believe that she well, turned it from school. I think you're not, you're not, you know, you're not taking it as the wisdom of Solomon as I thought a headmaster would have. 
you know, there's always two sides to a case. Absolutely. And you're not prepared to listen to her parents' side. I've listened to you. You know, you seem to think that my wife's fabricating all her illnesses. Absolutely not. No, no, let me finish. There is no okay. way we would condone her playing truancy. Absolutely truant. not. In no way. No. And she never has done. Is that correct? I don't know. I've well, you've got her. her records. Well, if, if she did it without us finding.